On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, the Denver Nuggets are NBA champions. As first reported on this program, it was in fact, as I said, if you listen to the show, you didn't even need to watch the finals because I told you what was going to happen, and it did. It was Nuggets and five, as I reported. TJ said it would be Heat and seven, but <laughs> TJ's an idiot, if we're being honest. What an idiot. It was not Heat and seven. <laughs> what an idiot. Uh Disgusting game of basketball tonight, if we're being completely honest. Uh, what th- th- This was a, a Rutgers-Wisconsin-ass Big Ten Network. Uh, Big Ten Network Plus, like the, the, the one game a year where you have to like pay Big Ten Network five bucks because it's streaming on... On the uh, on the internet and it's, it's student reporters are calling the game. That's what this game felt like. But in the end, the Nuggets won the championship, and none of that matters. And the rings won't say that it was a disgusting game. But as I was watching this, I was thinking, "Holy shit! I hope that they get this done because I do not want to watch anymore." I take back everything I said about the Heat. Everything, everything I was, everything I've I've said about like this is semi inspiring, and I understand why people are frustrated. But I'm not there yet. Like it's still fun to watch. Uh, this ragtag group of Heat players, I, I lost all of that tonight watching watching them play. Uh, I was I was very disgusted by what that game became. But the Nuggets won, and that was awesome because Nikola Jokic is awesome, and he wins an NBA championship and gets asked about it, and he just is basically like, "I'm I'm ready to go home now. Like this, I'm my, the job is now done. I'm ready to go home and crack open a beer." He's the best. Uh, very fired up about uh, the, this Nuggets team. They were so fun to watch this entire playoffs. Historic run from Jokic. Uh, first guy to ever lead the playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. Um, and it's leaving people asking two very obvious questions. Number one, dynasty? Is this the start of a Nuggets dynasty? What? Uh, where, where do the Nuggets go from here? Can they win another one? Michael Malone, um, as much as I want to roll my eyes at people talking about dynasty, because uh, that's what that's what that's what we do in the media. You, someone wins a championship, you immediately say, "Is this the start of a dynasty?" Or if it's like the middle of a dynasty, you say, "How long will this dynasty continue?" Um, but as much as like that feels like premature and stupid, Michael Malone kind of threw gas all over the all over the fire there by in the in the post game or in the uh, the trophy ceremony. He straight up is saying to the fans, doing the LeBron, D Wade, Chris Bosh thing. Not one, not two, not three. Uh, we got more coming, and uh, it certainly feels like when you look at the roster and you look at the rest of the league. I don't know, maybe maybe the Nuggets can win another one. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but the question number two, the most important one that we'll spend at least an hour, maybe hour and a half on today, is what does this mean for LeBron James' legacy? He was swept in these playoffs, but he was swept by the NBA champion Denver Nuggets. So actually, you can make an argument that maybe the Lakers were actually the second best team in the NBA, and in some small way that means lebron won tonight um we'll, we'll discuss that at length <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding obviously um we're gonna talk about the nuggets we're gonna celebrate this this, this fun team and uh, all the great things about this this nuggets playoff run uh there's some college basketball rules i want to touch on at the end i think uh t- two big ones that that are of note that uh i, I will tease I, I won't say what they are but we'll talk about them at the end uh also dabble in some other stuff um because uh there might be a UFO update, TJ. I have, I have another UFO update. <laughs> I'll, 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 spoiler alert, I think I'm out on the UFOs. I think I'm out. But I, I, I got to talk through it again because this is it's, it's been an emotional roller coaster. But the Denver Nuggets, NBA champions, Nikola Jokic gets his ring. Uh, the haters, the Jokic haters who were, were all over him for the last few years are very silent tonight. Congrats to Denver. We're going to talk about it. Let's get to it. All right, initial thoughts. I want to talk about the Nuggets, obviously, and like celebrate the uh, the championship and the and the run and the uh, you know forty seven years or whatever that that led to to this. Stan Kroenke, uh, kind of uh, Stan Kroenke, great sports town. Uh, is is he is he title town himself? The Avs win, the the Nuggets win, the Los Angeles Rams win. This man is just hoisting trophy after trophy. Um, and the Colorado Avalanche in the, in the NLL, in the, the Lacrosse League. Don't forget that, please. The what, what? They're not the Avalanche. The Mammoth. The Mammoth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Avalanche. It threw me off. I was like, did they, did they name the lacrosse team the Avalanche as well? <laughs> like every, <laughs> the WNBA team is named the Avalanche. Every team is the Avalanche in, in Colorado, except... Uh, shout out the Rockies, by the way. I saw the Colorado Rockies tweeted out a graphic of Rockies players... There's like three Rockies players in the graphic with three Nuggets players. And then it was like, congrats, Nuggets, on the NBA championship. The, the Colorado Rockies are a joke of a baseball franchise and have been forever. Um, 
and and I I say that lovingly. So what you know, like I'm not Rockies fans know it. No one's taking offense to this. It's it's very it's well documented how much of a joke this franchise is, and the fact that they're trying to like co-opt and be like we were a part of this along with you. We 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 really. Helped you along there, guys. Um, that was hilarious. But Stan Kroenke does not know how a microphone works, TJ. He's, this man has presented the trophy, and he's leaning into Lisa Salter's ear, whispering sweet nothings to her, like they're out of, at a nightclub, and he's trying to hit on her and take her home or something. That was very, very bizarre. Meanwhile, he's talking to the microphone. It's blaring all over the arena. Um, but the man is winning titles left and right, so what can you say? Uh Disgusting game. I think we got to talk about that. I, I, I can't let this go unchecked because uh, everyone that said that this was going to be a bad finals, I apologize for doubting you. Um, I thought that I thought that the Denver Nuggets uh, and, and Jokic and Murray and Porter and, uh, you know, KCP and Bruce Brown and Aaron Gordon's awesome. But like, I didn't think that he would have offensive explosion like he did uh, in the finals. But going to the finals, I was like, this is going to be fun because you have. Uh, a, a David Goliath situation, but also at the same time, a David Goliath situation in terms of like the team rosters, like the, the Nuggets are f- obviously way, way better than the Heat, but then you flip it on its head when you talk about like the, the totality of the two franchises. It's David Goliath in the sense of like the Heat are one of the better franchises in the NBA and it's, it's not uncommon for them to be playing for titles. Uh, and the Denver Nuggets have never even been in the finals, much less won one. So um, I thought there were storylines. I thought the Nuggets are so fun to watch that that would ultimately win out in the end and like whether they're wiping the floor with the Heat or not, it would still be fun to watch you know, Jokic whipping the ball over the place and Murray hitting crazy shots and Porter, you know, like I just thought like, listen, the games might not be close, but everyone's going to have fun watching this team. Um, anyone who thinks that this is going to be a bad finals is a bozo. I was wrong, TJ. I was I was very wrong. Tonight was one of the most disgusting NBA finals games I've ever witnessed. And it was close in the end. So I think like if you squint hard enough, you convince yourself that this was actually a good game, but you and I are Big Ten basketball fans, and we know better. We know better than to fall into this trap, and we know that this was disgusting, and we know that if if the Heat won that game on the Jimmy Butler horrendous call, which w- w- would have gone down, like if this was Game Seven, or like if there was, I guess if like the Heat win tonight, they they still did have they they, they would have continued to have a chance because it's the Miami Heat and they refused to die. But like if this happened in like not Game Five down three one, but this happened in Game Six or Game Seven and he go on to win a title that might have been the worst call in the history of basketball that might have, and, and I'll tell you why because there have been a lot of really 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 bad calls obviously there have been in a vacuum worse calls but how many bad calls do they review look at a thousand angles a thousand times and then in that moment still come out and and have the bad call uh, and still like up, uphold the bad call. That was the difference to me. It was like I, I understand why you blew the whistle in the first place because Jimmy Butler shot a three. He fell down. He, there's obvious contact. I get that. You know, refs aren't perfect. But then they go review the thing. They give the man three free throws. Um, I was like, this is this is just how this game is going. It's just like this. It's it's disgusting. There's bad calls. There's flopping. There's uh, I don't know. I I. I, I, I've been cheering for the Nuggets. I've been very open about that. Uh, I, I'm happy the Nuggets won a title, um, but I, I am very much a Jimmy Butler fan. I, I love Duncan Robinson. Um, I have immense respect for Eric Spolstra. Uh, what else? Should I, should I go on? Uh, uh, Greg Oden was on one of the LeBron Heat teams, and um, I sort of felt like, you know, when I would call him during that season, I felt like I was kind of on the team, TJ. So, like, in a weird way, like, I was – a part of heat culture, you know, um, <laughs> this is, I'm doing a horrendous job trying to qualify this, but, uh, I really, I really did have like, no, I, I don't know what it was about tonight, but like, I really had no, no ill will towards the heat or their style of play or the fact that they, they do muck it up. They've been mucking it up all playoffs. It's, it's, it's disgusting basketball. Kyle Lowry flops all over the place. Kevin Love flops all over the place. Um, I understand why other people were frustrated, but it just must have been like the college basketball fan in me or something. But like, I would watch the Heat and I'd say, I get it. I understand it. I understand why if you're like a, you know, a, a fan of other NBA teams, or if you're like an NBA reporter or someone who, you know, like I, we talked about this with Temp and, and you and I have talked about the TJ enough that like the Heat seem to be breaking NBA media's brains that they just can't like figure out wh- why and how this team continues to win. Um, and I, I w- was one of the, the the lone holdouts of like no this isn't too like this is the, the, there's beauty in how ugly this is and there's there's something 
there's something glorious about like seeing this scrappy team like claw their way to to this level and be so close to winning a title. All of that got flushed down the toilet tonight. Every every last ounce of that. By the end of that game, I was like, we cannot continue to let this. But if I have to watch this team play another goddamn game in these NBA finals, I'm going to scream. Uh, it was horrendous. And like they were sucking. The, the frustrating part was that they were, as teams that muck it up do, they were sucking Denver down to their level. Where like Denver, Miami's throwing the zone out there tonight, which they didn't even use in Game Four, and they're throwing it out in Game Five. Um. And it's not working, but it is working. And that, that'll like drive you crazy because like it, it's so clearly not working. The Nuggets were getting wide open shot after wide open shot. And yet if you look at the box score and you break down every possession that the Heat played zone, I'm sure they, they you know, they, they, the, the Nuggets probably scored on like three out of 41 possessions. Um, and, and the stat nerds will point to that and be like, see, this is why the Heat zone is so effective. I know what my eyeballs told me. I was watching the whole goddamn game. The Nuggets got wide open shot after wide open shot against the zone and were bricking everything. And I'm going crazy. Like, this is not the Denver, this is not the Denver Nuggets team I know. Um, yeah, and, and I was I was fed up. So I'm glad the Nuggets won for that reason alone because uh, I, I take back everything I said going into these finals that I thought they would be fun. The haters were right. Uh, this this ended up being a very disgusting finals. Um, but in the end, I, I do think like the right champion is crowned. Like we talked about this after UConn won, uh, where, where the final four this year going into it, like it was a similar vibe that the finals had this year, where it's like the, 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 the narrative or the conversations are about how it's a gross group of teams. And like, is anybody going to watch this? And people are talking about ratings before the games are even played. Um, and, and this finals had that as well. Uh, and in the same way, we look back uh, after UConn won, and I was like, you know what? In the end of the day, I think the, the, this for all the talk about like how ins- how how not sexy this matchup is and all that sort of thing, uh, UConn was the right champion. UConn was 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 dominant for most of the season. They had a they had a rough stretch there in January where they just you know were a college basketball team. But if you look over the totality of the season, they were that team. Um, I feel the same way about the Nuggets. It's like th- this this feels like the right champion. Uh, Obviously, like they they went out and, and proved it, but um, they 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 feel like a worthy champion. I think any anybody that's like a, a an NBA fan or, or yeah follows the sport closely or whatever. Um, I don't know how you can look at the Nuggets at this point and and pretend like this was a fluke or there's an asterisk or like this 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 was not like like uh, th- 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 we we don't need a referendum on on NBA basketball is what I'm saying. And I think if the Heat won. That was what was going to happen. I think if the Heat won, there was going to be long discussions about like what, how do we make sure this never happens again <laughs> in the NBA? Um, and I think the Nuggets winning that, I think the league can take a collective sigh of relief. I think all the people that cover the league, uh, all the t- like everybody's like, yeah, this makes sense. In the end, this makes sense. Um, which is funny because I think going into the season, everyone would have told you that the Denver Nuggets are frauds and Jokic will never get it done and, and all that sort of thing. But here we are. NBA champion. So I'm I'm normally one to defend bad basketball just because I watch it so much. But yeah, that's not what I came to the NBA finals expecting to see. It's tough. Yeah, like, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be it, bad basketball is charming at the college level because yeah. you, you you talk yourself you, you romanticize that they are just kids and like this is this is the only four year window that they can play. Which you throw that out the window by the way. Like at this point, right, yeah. there's no such thing as a four year window anymore. Um, but yeah, you, you the the reason we fall in love with college basketball, and we like uh, accept the disgusting games, is because of all the other stuff, yeah. which none of none of that applies to these guys who are making thirty freaking million dollars a year and can't hit wide open threes. Very it's, frustrating. It's also dude. different ways to win in college. Like you can play to schemes, the game shorter, the game smaller, whatever. But in the pros, it's pretty much like you you're supposed to like you come to expect. Like shooters making shots, and that's, <laughs> right, that's just crazy. not what this <laughs> was. Like, I mean, shout out to I don't want to hear. I don't want to. I'm gonna. I, I. I. All right, hypocrite. Hypocrite, Mark. All right, I'm gonna put my my hypocrite hat on. Uh, I say I want to bridge the gap, TJ. I said this is one of my one of my uh, uh, goals with with. <laughs> I don't know. I, I <laughs> whatever. <laughs> My, I, I strive to be a guy who bridges the gap between college and the NBA. I want to, I want to build bridges. I do not want, uh, I do not want animosity. I do not, I do not want NBA fans saying college basketball is unwatchable. I do not want college fans telling me that the NBA is garbage and these guys, you know, are are lazy or whatever the 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 things. We we know what people say, but I, I want people to love basketball. And if you love basketball, I want you to love basketball. Um, 
be that as it may, I, I, I have to I have to acknowledge part part of part of bridging the gap sometimes is fighting the fight when it comes to your doorstep. And I don't want to hear a goddamn word from any NBA people about college basketball ever again. I don't want I don't want to hear about how unwatchable it is. I don't want to hear about how like we're breaking shots left and right and how do you watch this garbage on the biggest stage that you have, the biggest stage in professional basketball. It was the, the Nuggets were what one for nineteen from three, and they won the game. They won the game. This is the team that won the championship and won not only won the championship, they won the very game that they couldn't make a wide open shot, which is you know it speaks to Jokic's great. Is it? There's there's a lot of like silver linings or like reasons why this happens, and you know, you could celebrate that. But I don't want to. I, I I never want to hear again like how can you watch this garbage when when there's a there's a. a a, a slugfest college basketball game going on. Syracuse and Duke are are on ESPN at 7 p.m. and the whole nation's watching because there's not much else on. And this is like one of those moments where like college basketball's got the nation's attention, and the two three zone is just mucking it up. And and Duke's freshman can't hit shit, and it's just a gross basketball game. And then all the NBA people are firing. Like they're all watching because like they want to see the they want to see Kyle Filipowski who came back to Duke, and Duke's number one in the country, and all this shit. And like everyone's watching. And then it's just tweet after tweet of like I don't know how people watch this garbage. This is disgusting. This is a this is a this is a game in Syracuse in the regular season. This is not the NBA Finals game five where a champion is crowned, where the team that can't hit a shot gets to be the NBA champion. You know. So I'm not. I don't have a problem with it. At the end of the day, like I, I, I don't want to see ugly basketball every single night, um, which is what we were kind of trending towards with these finals. Which is why I was starting to get concerned because I don't want to see like game six and seven where it's like, all right, these are the times where it's supposed to be sexy and fun, and it just continues to devolve into a slugfest. Uh, I don't have a problem with ugly basketball. I have a problem with the NBA people shitting on college basketball. You can you, you've you've lost your you've lost your 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 high ground. After tonight, you've lost the high ground. This was this was an atrocious product that was put on the on the court by your standards. To my standards, it wasn't it wasn't that like as a one off, it wasn't that bad. Um, but by NBA standards, this was atrocious. So I never I never want to I never want to hear this again. Also, also, and this doesn't matter too much to the main point. But why was this game not yesterday? Why why didn't they? I know, dude. It's so frustrating. What was the well, point? What, 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 nothing. I was doing nothing yesterday. All I was just. Laying, <laughs> I was well, that's not true. We'll get to it later. But I was, I was conquering Hyrule. But let's go. Um, let's go. Yeah, the, the, that that was like perfect. It, it should have put a game like there was nothing on. The secession's that's over. Great, there was no TV uh, on. It was just. I was bored. I just love. I just love your your point of view. It's like I was. I personally was doing nothing. So yeah. like it would have. Yeah. Like it would have. For I me, sat it down, been for, great. For me, I sat down on my couch at five p.m. I turned on the TV. And honestly, I was kind of hoping the NBA Finals would have been going on. They were not. I was frustrated. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I. I. I I'm old school. Uh, I. To me. Excuse me. I had to burp. Uh, to me, two three two format. I. They got to go back to that. I think they. So. God damn! I got the burps. They. They used to do the. Uh, the two three two format because it was always the. The, the NBA would rig it to be Celtics Lakers, as we know. Like this is you know a tale as old as time. Um, and the flying back and forth, that's my understanding. It was like flying from Boston to LA back and forth, uh, was, was so taxing. Whereas like in the Western conference finals, if the Lakers are playing, you know, the jazz, it's not a, it's not as brutal of a flight, but that the Lakers got to play the Celtic. So they were doing two, the finals would always be two, three, two. Um, and that's how I that's that's how I remember it always yeah. being, which is not like some someone's going to point out that like it actually was only that way for like four years or something. But like that's I, I that's that's my when you ask me I like before the finals even happened, if you would ask me, I would say like they still do two three two right, and then the finals start and you're like that's right they don't they changed that like fifteen years ago. Um, but that's I I th- I think two three two makes sense for that reason because the 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 extra day of travel is nonsense, and I think the rest of the country just like the casual fans I imagine probably tune out. Because you're right. There's, there should be, as as dumb as it sounds to hear you say that out loud. At the same time, there's a lot of truth to that. That like, there are people that just like plop down on a Sunday and they turn on their TV and they're like, there should be, there should be NBA finals on. Yeah. Why is there, there not just a, be a big on? sporting event every Sunday? Yeah, that's that's true. That's that's a good point. <laughs> we need someone to just oversee all sports and make sure that we have one big event every Sunday. Um, and yeah, if it's not going to be the NBA, figure out something. We need something there. Uh can the Nuggets is is this the start of a Nuggets dynasty? I was prepared, uh, you know, I, I I thought coming into to tonight, 
if the Nuggets won, I was going to tongue in cheek talk about a Nuggets dynasty because, as I said at the top, that's what you do when a team wins a championship. You uh, you jokingly say is the start of a dynasty. Um, but then Michael Malone, you know, he makes it. He's making it a very real thing, you know, like by by when the head coach is acknowledging that we're here to win more than one. Uh, now we have to now we have to flesh this out. So uh, Bruce Brown's probably gone. I mean, I think we could start there. That he's he's got the player option. Um, I I am not an amateur GM. That is not my my lane. I'm gonna go ahead and get. I think he's making like if if he opts in for next year with his current contract. I think it's like six million dollars. Again, not an amateur GM. I don't know how salaries work in the NBA. I don't know how the cap works. I'm going to go ahead and take a wild guess that if Bruce Brown opts out of that contract, he's going to get more money in free agency. And I am going to go ahead and take a wild guess that whatever he commands in free agency, the Denver Nuggets are not going to step up and say, we can also pay that when we're paying Jamal Murray and uh, Nikola Jokic and Michael Porter and Aaron Gordon. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Bruce Brown's going to be gone. Other than that... Uh, basically the same team back next year. Um, it's it's Murray. Like, w- w- if you're forecasting a Nuggets dynasty, uh, and again, kind of stupid to do that. We could talk about the, that as well. But I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain the idea for a second. If you're forecasting a Nuggets dynasty, obviously Jokic, obviously Murray. Um, I think Porter and Gordon. Uh, I, I like those. those the, that's the core four. You need you you, you ten million percent obviously need Jokic and Murray. I think even though Porter was was not great in this series, I think you need Porter. Um you Aaron Gordon definitively proved his worth and like you know, and making the comparisons with the Nuggets this year and the Warriors in 2015 that I was, you know, kind of as these playoffs were going on and I kept like scratching my head and squinting and like is this the are there similarities here? Um Aaron Gordon I think in these finals demonstrably showcase that he is the Draymond Green role. Not to say he's the same player, not to say that he's the same value, I, I, none of those things. But if you're trying to make like that comparison, I think Aaron Gordon stepped up in a big way and said, like, I, I play this role for this team. And with that, I am super, super valuable. That like uh, th- That's what they say about Draymond. And that's why like I think Draymond, as much as there are rumors swirling that Draymond... I mean, it, it does feel like Draymond or Jordan Poole, one of them's got to go, and it feels like it's going to be Jordan Poole, but I don't know. I'm just, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the Warriors cut bait with Draymond. I don't know. It's going to be fascinating. I, I, nothing would surprise me in this league, TJ. I'll just put it that way. In this league, nothing would surprise me. Um, but the thing they always say about Draymond is he's far more valuable to the Warriors than he is to other teams, which is not like a knock on Draymond. It's just that like this roster and – the culture they have there and all that sort of thing, like elevates Draymond's production. Aaron Gordon is the, is that guy for this team. And I think uh, th- th- they need him not to say that he's going anywhere they, that that's in jeopardy, but I'm just like figuring out like, cause, cause as, as teams continue to have success and this is true, even of the Warriors is like, there is roster turnover. You see Steph, you see clay, you see Draymond green. Um, and you're like, this is the same core of guys, but you also look back on their first title and their last title, and you're like, wait a second, the rest of the roster has kind of been flipped over. What happened to Sean Livingston? Where did he go? Where did Andrew Wiggins come from? You know, like there are guys that pop up, there are guys that disappear. Um, so as you're trying to flesh out the roster continuity of Denver these next few years, uh, I, I, I do think that core four, you got to lock in. Um, now, if, if somehow along the line, you lose Porter. I don't think you will. I think Porter is smart enough to. I, I don't know what his contract is. I know he's still got a few years left on it. I should probably look that up if we're gonna if we're gonna do the uh, Michael Porter contract. Um, I, I like Porter feels like a guy who is is capable of like exploding and and you know he, as bad of a finals as he had, he had big games in the the playoffs and um is obviously an immense talent, but uh. I have to imagine that. Hold on, let me pull up his contract. What is his he's contract? on a five-year deal? Yeah, he's he's still got tons of tons of time left on his contract, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was getting him mixed up with someone else. Um, yeah, so he's gonna be around, you know. Uh, but like he he would be the one. Like the, uh, even if all four of those guys were free agents, which they aren't. They're they're the Denver has them tied up. Um, I feel like. 
like Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter, like Murray and Jokic are definitely not going anywhere, and the Nuggets will pay a hundred. They'll pay them a hundred million dollars a year if they have to to keep them. But the the, the other two guys, if it even if it came down to it, there I, I feel like winning a championship, being on this team, playing with Nikola Jokic, playing with Jamal Murray, uh, you have two guys in Porter and Gordon who. Um, just kind of, if if you think on their their paths through basketball, I have to imagine both of them are are tickled to death to be on this team and have to like appreciate winning and and the value of of being on a winner and and competing for championships and winning championships more so than than whatever else might be alluring out there. Which I, I guess we don't even really need to talk about this because they're they're both under contract. But I'm just. Uh, a five-year deal? What's Aaron Gordon's contract? We need. To, I, I, sh- I should have written all this down. <laughs> Aaron Gordon has player option in 2025-26. So he's still got a couple years left. Yeah. Um. But I, 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 I would like to see both. I would like to see all four of those guys ride it out the rest of their careers. Um. And I know it doesn't always work that way. Uh. But I for for Porter. To have the back injuries he did, to have the the roller coaster of being the number one recruit in the country, uh, being so sought after and, and such a huge prize, and and he commits to Missouri and uh, he's playing with his brother and like the the hype around him was was through the roof. The man barely plays in college, uh, is dealing with back injury after back injury, falls to to Denver in the draft because of the back problems, and and you know he he said that tonight when in the in the trophy presentation and he's asked about you know like the the how does it feel like that's that's the question how does it feel I want to get a job it's not Lisa Salters I don't mean to to shit on her it's like obviously the the producers are telling her what to say but uh, the how does it feel question that that should be a bit of mine TJ I need to get press passes and just go to like post game press conferences. And just literally raise my hand, raise my hand, and literally just ask, "How does it feel?" And that's it. It's like, Coach, how does this one feel? And then set the microphone. Down. <laughs> but it's after, a, yeah, it's after a random regular season game. Yeah, right, right. And then the SID is like, "Anybody else have any other questions?" And every other reporter is like, "Fuck, he took my question. That was my question. <laughs> I have nothing else to ask." Um, but Porter mentioned something about like this franchise believing in me, and uh, you know that that's that's real, man. Because like the, I I remember that draft when he was coming out, and and you know like he he was a number one overall pick talent, but he was j- just on like raw talent. You got a guy that's six foot ten that shoots threes, puts the ball on the deck, like you know like the, the 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 he's a workout warrior, as they would say. Like you watch his workouts, you're like this guy. He I understand why he was the number one recruit in the country. Um, but back problems are no joke, and for that reason, there were people talking like, "Should we, you know, is he even first rounder? Is he gonna? How far is he gonna slide?" Uh, Denver ultimately takes him. I believe it was 14th in that draft, um, late lottery. Uh, but he, it, it ends up being a steal for Denver, and that's why the Nuggets are are for as good as Jokic is and Murray is and all that. Like you, you, the NBA. Um, if the Heat have taught us nothing else, like I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't think the NBA is a league anymore if it ever was where simply having the best player is, is the path to the championship. Now you can point to these nuggets. You can say Nikola Jokic is the best player in the world. And that's why they won the NBA title. I would say Nikola Jokic was the best player last year. He was the best player of the year before that. What's the difference between this year and, and the past years is that he didn't have his Jamal Murray's, you know, and they didn't have the, the defensive role guys to step up uh, KCPs and the Bruce Browns. Um, so, with that in mind, like I, I, I think the NBA that this new, if if there is a paradigm shift, and I don't know if there is or not, but like the Heat going on this run kind of feels like maybe, kind of sorta of there is. Uh, having the Lakers and Celtics, have, having the Celtics like fall short when they have so much talent and the Heat beat it. Like I don't know, it just feels like they're we're in this weird, like what is the NBA? How do you build a winner right now? Era. Um, I do think the the days of saying like we need the the the, the top guy in the league. I, I think those days are over. And like building, winning a championship is more about who's your fourth best player, who's your seventh best player, who's who's the ninth best player that barely plays, but when he does come in, I guess maybe bad example because DeAndre Jordan did a whole lot of nothing tonight. But uh, shout out to DeAndre Jordan anyway. Uh, Club Trill guy by the way, DeAndre Jordan, famous picture. Um, famous in my in in my family that's literally it just just to my family but uh deandre jordan bought a club trill shirt in the early days of club trillion wow um 
and he i have a picture of him like is he pointing at it is he like popping it something like that but it's like he's repping he's repping club trail hard and uh i don't think he knows what club trillion is tj i think he just saw a run dmc shirt and thought club trill sounds kind of cool and bought the shirt um but anyway he was he he he's a, he's an owner of a club trill shirt uh where was i i, I was talking about porter um yeah, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I, I think in the NBA, that that's my read on where the NBA is at, where it's going, where it's frankly probably been always. But like, that's not the way people talk about it. Is it's it's not Michael Jordan. Who who is your Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen? It is who's your Tony Kukoc? Who is your Dennis Rodman? Like those those are the guys that are ultimately going to take you from a super fun team to watch to a team that's going to win championships. And with that in mind, I just I I. I, I think Porter is just so valuable to the Nuggets, obviously, and I he I I was happy to see him play well tonight, even though he he wasn't shooting particularly well, because um, he's been he's been garbage in the finals, and to to see him, uh, to see him end on a high note was 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 very encouraging. Um, oh, I just saw you just sent me this. Jokic celebrating. This is hilarious. <laughs> he just looks like he he wants to get out of there. TJ sent me the uh, video of Jokic popping the champagne bottle. And he like does it. He's just like, "What do I do? I shake it. All right, shake, shake. All right, who do I hand this to now? How do I get that?" Some, somebody took a picture of the trophy presentation, and he literally could not be further to the side of the stage. Like he's like basically under the basket while they're doing the trophy presentation. He wants no All part right. of it. All right, let's talk. Let's talk this out. Devil's advocate time. <sighs> do we think this is hundred percent genuine, TJ? I do. I do. But it needs to be asked. Is he playing this up, this disinterest up? And whether he is or whether he isn't, do you think there will come a time where the the basketball fans of the world will no longer find this charming? That they'll be like, okay, we get it. Jokic doesn't give a shit about anything. Like this isn't this isn't cool anymore. I'm just I don't believe this. This is just this is what you have to do. Sometimes in sports media, you just have to like fire up takes that you don't even believe. You just have to like put them out there. Just to like let yeah. other people chew on them. Um, I, 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 I'm going to answer my own question. No, you're a fucking idiot, Mark. Why would you say that? Uh, but but <laughs> I can see it why is like because like, you want you want to you want to see you do want to see him cry. You like like we want to see yeah. You want to see him care. You know what I mean? Like you you yes. want because like the whole time he's been he's been monotone about everything. I think the part of why that's charming and we love it. And we do love it. We all love it. And if you say you don't love it, you're wrong. It's awesome. When he, he puts up insane, unprecedented numbers in finals games and he's asked about it and he's like, did I? I don't, you know, whatever. I just want to keep winning. I just want to keep winning. The reason that's charming is because in your mind, the the, the, can, the head can in your building is that he's waiting to win the NBA championship. That's all he's ever cared about is winning the NBA championship. And when he wins the NBA championship, then there's going to just be an explosion of joy and, and, and all that. And then to see him win and continue to be like, I don't care. It just kind of feels a little, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's, what is it? He, he's I don't a know. He, his <laughs> like he's a robot. He's got all of like the emotion genes. And yeah. His brother's like sobbing. Started, yeah. Yeah. They just started throwing the coach and the GM up in the air. I don't know. It's yeah. like, he is like a robot or like a mythical creature. And like, he plays like one, which fits the mold, but it's not really like marketable. I, I, I know yeah. like the NBA probably cares about that as far as like future script writing goes. Like <laughs> maybe he doesn't know that it's over. Does he like think that, that potentially there's more teams to play there's because more... this was so easy? Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, he, he, they, they have to play. I mean, the Heat, the Heat also never feel like they're completely out of it. So maybe he does think that the Heat <laughs> are still in it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Like they have to go back to Miami's, uh, still. No, it's I I uh, I don't have a problem with it. I just wish I I, I was under the under. I, the story I told myself was that when Jokic does win a title, not that he was gonna, you know, be Kobe and pounding his chest on the scores table and you know, uh, hugging the uh, hugging the trophy in the bathroom and and all that sort of thing. Like I I didn't necessarily think we were going to get iconic shots of Jokic, but I did think that he would. Just a scotch, just like a scotch yeah. of like this is really fucking cool, and I I've dreamed about this day my whole life, and um, I can't believe I did this, and <laughs> just to be like, but I don't know, maybe maybe that's what 
maybe there is something charming to that. Like just, the, the, I, but at a certain point, if he doesn't ever care, I just like it, it's like almost like a horseshoe deal of like, are you the same as like a Devin Booker getting his ass kicked in the playoffs and he's just like shrugging his shoulders, like who cares? I, I bang hot chicks and make an ungodly amount of money and that's my life. So like, I don't really care that I'm down by 30 at home for the second straight year in an elimination game. Um, that's why Joel's the MVP. There's that kid. There's there that not caring. And then there's Jokic not caring. And yeah, Joel's like in the middle where he's yeah. like, I will get blown out, but I will also care. <laughs> I will also cry. Tears I will also joy. cry. <laughs> and when, uh, and when I, I'm not going to win the MVP, I will campaign for it. Um, so anyway, uh, Porter, I, I I forget the who cares who cares what I was saying. Because um, Porter's <laughs> under contract, Gordon's under contract. Yeah. I was just saying like a guy like him is like super valuable, and I I, I forecast because like if we're talking dynasty, it isn't just like the next couple years. It is like you know like, I think the the appealing part of this is that Jokic and Murray are still young enough that they're going to be there for X number of years. Where this is like a seven, eight, nine, ten year run, whatever. How many titles can they win in those next uh, X number of years? Um, if there does in fact come a time where Porter or Gordon are like, I don't want to be third, fourth banana on this team. I, I, I feel like those two guys specifically are wired. Uh, maybe not wired, but just like, hopefully they appreciate that, that winning being, being on winning an NBA championship, I imagine is a lot more fun than being on like a 32 win team where you average 19 mm-hmm. points a game, you know? And Aaron Gordon, that was Aaron Gordon, man. He was at, like, when he was on the Magic, they were dog shit. He was sort of, he's taken fourth overall in the draft. He's sort of, like, not fully, like, the franchise guy, but he is, like, hey, man, you're the number four pick, and you're the guy that's, like, kind of, I guess, the face of the franchise at the time because you're in these dunk contests, jumping over cars and shit. And he, did he jump over the car? Was that Blake? Did he jump over a car? Did Aaron Gordon jump over a car? Dude. That was Blake Griffin. That was Blake Griffin, but Aaron Gordon, I thought, did too. I know Aaron. He jumped over the mascot uh, under both legs. One. He did. He did. He jumped over Blake. I knew Blake jumped over the car, but did did Aaron Gordon ever jump over? I guess you can't because Blake already did it. Aaron Gordon jumped over mascot. Mascot. Mascot's the one. I see another video potentially of a car. Taco Fall. He jumped over Taco Fall as well. Seven foot five. Taco Fall. Yeah, Blake was the only one that jumped over a car. How about that? What a legacy. He jumped over still the hood the only, of the car. Still the, still the only guy to jump over the hood of a car. And the dunk guy. Uh, <laughs> but that was that was Aaron Gordon on the Magic. That was like his, his NBA destiny was to be a guy that like never wins. Literally never wins anything. He never won the dunk contest, did he? Didn't he always lose to Zach Levine? Zach Levine, yeah. Yeah, he always lost. Even though he put up like absurd absurd dunk contest performances um and he kind of reinvented himself not not kind of he, he did he reinvented himself on this nuggets team they do not win a championship without him he, he's so so pivotal and i i just trust that like at this point in his career he's got to understand and, and he does and I, I don't mean to like say it from a a, a place of like an, an accusatory angle as though like aaron gordon does not appreciate this or michael porter does not appreciate this i'm just Again, as you're fleshing out like what could potentially be roster turnover, my hope and and my trust is that those four guys will stick around for a very long time for Denver. And the whole point, if I can bring this home, uh, is that I think with those four guys, it almost doesn't matter who you put around them. Now, you do obviously KCP, Bruce Brown, huge pickups. Christian Brown uh, was 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 awesome for them. Um, he's he's going to continue to grow for them. Uh, I, I, Jeff Green gave good minutes at times, you know, like he's, I, I don't think he's part of their future. If you're fleshing out dynasty, I, I wouldn't count on 36 year old Jeff Green sticking around for the next 10 years. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Maybe him and LeBron are visiting the same doctors and he, he figures something out. But, um, I, I, I do think Bruce Brown and KCP are massive pickups. I think having two guys like that, that, that can play defense and bring a little bit of an edge to Denver is, is what was sorely needed. But I also think that they're replaceable in the sense of like, if you, cause I, I, I think Bruce Brown is, is done. I think we saw the last of him in a Nuggets Jersey. KCP comes back next year. And then I think his player option kicks in. Uh, I would love to see him stick around. I would love to see the Nuggets, like keep this roster together as, as long as they can. But if they lose those guys, I think you can replace them with similar with guys of similar ilk, if that makes sense. Like you can't, 
you can't just like KCP is awesome. KCP is so much better than I think like average basketball fans realize. Like he, having a guy who's who's a knockdown shooter like he is, a bulldog defender like he's, he's so selfless. Like I, fr- I freaking love watching KCP play basketball. Um, I don't mean to say that guys like that grow on trees. I just there are enough. The, the role that he plays on this team ultimately is more of like a cultural thing because they're so fucking good at every other position that uh, you kind of just need like guys like him and Bruce Brown. They're just like bulldogs that can, you know, every so often you're like, listen, man, we need to stop. Um, Aaron Gordon needs to guard this guy. So we need you on this other guy to stop him and to have guys like that, that can step up. Uh, I, I think that's all they really need to address. So long story short, I do think there's a path that the Nuggets uh, uh, could rip off a few titles. Now, the the problem with that line of thinking, TJ, is that you said the exact same thing about the Milwaukee Bucks after they won the title. And the the whole reason that we get sucked into these dynasty talks after a team wins one championship is that we as sports fans are morons, and we believe that everything we saw tonight is exactly how tomorrow will be. Uh, And that's never been the case. And if it was, none of us would watch sports because we would be watching the exact same. The New York Yankees would continue to win World Series after World Series after World Series. And, you know, like these, they're, they're, so we've been here before. The exact same, everything you're saying about the Nuggets tonight was said about the Bucks after they won their title, where Giannis is the best player in the world and so dominant and he's still young and uh, the, the Middleton and Holiday and Lopez and like this this core of guys they have around him are, are so freaking good and they're going to be here for a while. And um, and guess what? Those guys are still there at, in Milwaukee and they just lost to an eight seed in five games this year. Uh, so who the hell knows? That, that As it turns out, like winning an NBA championship is very, very difficult. Um, and I... I on the one hand, yes, I do believe that the Denver Nuggets are in a great position to win another title uh, at, at some point in the near future. On the other hand, I think putting an expectation on it is kind of absurd to say if they do not, and if if Jokic never wins another title, he's a failure. He's not. It's 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 insanely insanely hard to to win a title. Um, and and frankly, like. There are there there were other teams in the NBA that were good enough to win a title. The Boston Celtics were good enough to win an NBA championship. The Milwaukee Bucks were good enough to win an NBA championship. I think the Sixers were good enough to win an NBA championship. Uh, even though that feels laughable, given like the the you know the, the the memes and 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 how much we're all convinced that Harden and Embiid and Doc Rivers can't get it done. Like I, I if you just look at like. I mean, they were right. They they were there. They were there against the Celtics, and I think the Celtics. I think it just. I I, I think, and I've said this before, uh, and I'll, I'll say it a million more times. Um, I don't think you look at it as like the way the path to an NBA championship or a, a, an NCAA championship or really any championship in any sport is. We have to build a juggernaut of a team that's better than everybody that's going to beat the shit out of everybody, and we are definitively the best team in the league, in the country, whatever. I think the way you win a championship is you establish as a franchise, as a program, uh, whatever else, this is the threshold that we believe we have to be at to be in the mix. And then once you're in the mix, you just kind of leave it in the basketball god's hands, more or less. You just kind of hope it all like works out for you. And I think like that's that's the approach of like as you're forecasting who's going to win titles moving forward. It's not about like the Nuggets won it this year. I think they have to be the favorites. Uh, the Bucks won it a couple years ago. I think they have to be the favorites. The Warriors won it last year. I think they have to be also be in the. I don't I don't think it works that way. I think it's more like look at the teams that are are very much at that threshold, and then from there you just kind of like tweak things here and there and, and the, the only exceptions are the teams like the 96 bulls uh are the teams like the 01 lakers who went i think like 15 and one because i think the first round was through best of five back then but the, I, I remember the the 01 lakers lost one game they lost to the sixers in the uh the nba finals but they swept everybody else um a team like that you're going into next year obviously they won in 2000 they went in 01 i understand how at that point you're talking like is this franchise ever going to lose again and i think the Lakers going into 2002 were like, yes, we are obviously heavy, heavy favorites, and we're going to beat the shit out of everybody. Um, and the refs are going to help us against the Kings. That's how this is going to work. Uh, but I, I don't think it's a fair way to look at it uh, for for any other team, unless you're like just an absolute behemoth juggernaut of that caliber. And the Nuggets are very, very good. And this was a great playoff run. Um, but I just don't, I don't, I don't think that that's where this team is at. And I, I think like setting an unfair expectation is absurd. And I think like. There is a world. I mean, like you look at the West. Like I think 
Jokes aside about LeBron, jokes aside about the Lakers, uh, this isn't me getting sucked into LeBron Lakers talk. I just get the feeling that LeBron's got one more one more run in him. Like I, I don't mean title run. I don't mean he's definitely going to win another ring. But I don't think... I mean... The Lakers did get swept, but I the Lakers played the Nuggets better than anybody else did in the playoffs. They if you watch the games, they they don't hang a banner for it. I'm not saying I I continue to 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 if if you're a LeBron hater, continue to make your memes about him getting swept. Have at it, eat your heart out. I'm just pulling back objectively, and I'm saying they are old as shit. They 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 are not. They, their offense is atrocious at times. Uh, they they are clearly not better than the Denver Nuggets. But the Lakers were a lot closer than anyone else of beating the Nuggets, even though they got swept. And that sounds absurd to say because they got swept, <laughs> but <laughs> they were there were four competitive games. They were they were like yeah. right there in a way that the Heat were getting their ass kicked in most of these until tonight. The Heat were getting their ass kicked like basically every game, and then would just like muck it up and like do like a backdoor like I don't know if covers I get covers the word, but like backdoor like competitiveness like tried to steal the game in the end type bullshit. Whereas the Lakers were like right there for most of the game and then ultimately just ran out of gas, which I guess maybe I'm, I'm talking myself in circles because why would that bode well for the Lakers moving forward if LeBron's going to be another year older next year? I don't know. I just, I just can't like – maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I, I just feel like LeBron has one more in him. Not one more – I don't mean one more title. I just mean like one more like serious I, – I don't think – I don't think the last time we saw LeBron be competitive – a LeBron team be competitive was him being swept. I think there's like one more iteration of what LeBron James is and whether that means a title or not. I just think like, I, I don't think it's, I don't think the Lakers are, I, I think the Lakers still have to be dealt with. I'll put it that way. I think the Lakers, yeah. I, I don't think they're fully dead yet. The Suns, meanwhile, like they're, they're, they're role players and they're been, they got to clean that shit up. But like Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, you have two of the best players. You have, you have one of the best duos in the NBA. They're not going anywhere. They're still in the West. Uh, the Warriors are, you know, like they're, I guess their dynasty is technically over, but also at the same time, like, I don't know. It, 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 they had basically the exact same team this year that they had last year, and uh, last year they won the title. So, you know, like maybe they figure out their chemistry issues and, and they're back in the mix. Um, I, I think the, the I, I already talked about the teams in the East and um, the Heat, Why? I mean, Shit, they did it this year. What what reason do we not believe that the Heat are going to be in the mix next year? I just hell the the, the Oklahoma City Thunder could come out of nowhere. They're, they were so young and so fun this year, and they, um, yeah, there's definitely a world where like Chet Holmgren's healthy and he's fucking awesome, and like uh, uh, with the with the rest of that young core they have, and Shea Gilgis Gilgis Alexander and all those other dude, Josh Giddy. Uh, I don't know, not that the Thunder are going to win the title, but, like, maybe the Thunder, like, stun the Nuggets next year, you know, like in the yeah. in the conference semis. I don't know. The point is, a lot of crazy shit happens in the NBA, and uh, I don't need to – it, it's more likely than not that the Nuggets um, – honestly, it's more likely than not they're not going to win the title next year. Like, it's, it's very, very difficult to, to do that, and I, I think, like, having this expectation that they should is insane. But at the same time – uh, I, I fully support Michael Malone having that expect. Like I, I think, I think like the the basketball world having that expectation is unfair. But I also think the coach in the locker room saying the goal for next year is to win an NBA championship. Like that is is very very obvious and a no brainer. So I, I have no problem with Michael Malone saying like we believe that we're going to win multiple championships yep. moving forward. So anyway, that's that. I have the odds in front of me for next year. They're can I guess? Already out on the sports book. Yep. Can I can I go through the? Uh, I, I won't guess the odds because I'm just in, too in order. I'll just yeah. I'll just do an order. Uh, Nuggets are obviously the favorite. They're tied for first with the Celtics. Nope. Whoa. Bucks. Yes. Five Bucks. to one. Then the Celtics. Yes. Okay. Um. A little bit of a drop off and, and from three to four. Yeah, I would imagine those those three seem to be the obvious. Uh. I feel like for some reason odds makers love the Suns to where I feel like the Suns might be up there. The it's gotta be the Warriors. The Lakers? Lakers are four at eight to Lakers? one. Lakers? Uh is it Suns and Warriors or is it Sixers? Suns at fifth at ten to one, Warriors sixth at twelve to one. Huh. 
Grizzlies got second, got the two seed in the West, and they're just like not even nobody. Isn't that something? Well, I guess that's because, dude, we're about to hear the John Morant news, right? Yeah, I guess that'll that'll probably come out. It, potentially, it's out already, and we don't we we haven't seen it because it was swept under the rug so so well. Adam Silver should have announced it tonight. He should have announced just it under as his was, breath in between yeah. in between sentences. Before we uh, before we give the trophy out, I would like to quickly. Um, address something. John Moran has been suspended for. Um, yeah, that's why they were the two seed in the West, and same with the Kings. 20, the Kings are twenty to one. The Kings were the Kings were the three seed. Correct me if I'm wrong. They were the three seed this year. They finished third in the West, and uh, they're nowhere they to be are found. Thirty to one. I believe in the Kings more than the Grizzlies. I believe in the just mostly because I like the Kings more than the Grizzlies. You're you're yeah. looking at the jersey. You're looking at the jerseys, TJ. You're you're falling into the jerseys. The team. I mean, I just don't trust. I don't like Jaws a buffoon off the court, but like Jaws also like an insane. Yeah, he's so he's so fucking good, but he's like Derrick Rose, dude. Like he's not he's not. Th- this man is not built for a long term. He, he the way he attacks the rim, he's just gonna like. The, the whole wrist yeah. deal he had this year is not a fluke. Like, that's the, when, when you go he, a million he, miles an hour and jump uh, 10 feet in the air. It's like a, like a massive car crash underneath the rim, like once every three yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. That's not exactly, that doesn't bode well. And then, plus, like, I just kind of hate everyone on that team. Except Desmond, Desmond Bain, I, he's my one. Uh, I don't hate everyone on the team because there, there are some dudes that aren't that bad. But uh, Desmond Bain is my one blind spot because he's, he's a Hoosier. And we actually share the same birthday, weirdly enough. I just I don't know why I know that, but it was like one of those things you learn, and then you just kind of don't. But he's from Indiana, and he has the same birthday as me. So for th- those reasons alone, I just love him. <laughs> Even though like every other NBA fan's like this guy sucks. Him and Dylan Brooks and John Morant are like the three headed douchebag monster of <laughs> the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know. I, I like Desmond Bain. What, what can I say? Um. But yeah, uh, we're, just, we're going through the odds. Uh, yeah, the, the Grizzlies were the two seed. That's crazy that they're not even, not even in the mix. Um, I'm fascinated by the Thunder. The Thunder were so fun, and uh, I don't think like next year's not the year. But yeah, they're young and they, they got a million draft picks. And yeah, you just you just never know. I mean, it's the, there, there's so many examples of speaking of the Thunder. Hell, remember when when Westbrook and Harden and Durant went to the finals and lost to the Heat, and everyone was like, "That's all right, they'll be back and they'll win multiple titles." And <laughs> Never, never won. None of them have won a title since. Never mind them winning for the Thunder. All three of them have still never won a title. TJ. All three of them are over. Westbrook hasn't. Harden hasn't. And Durant has not. He's not. He he still has zero titles. I just I just looked it up. Kevin Durant <laughs> win a real ring. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. I don't I don't know what. Shout out to uh, Christian Brown winning the uh, the. NCAA championship of Kansas, winning the NBA championship, also won like a ton of high school state titles. Kid's a winner. Uh, I would retire. I would consider retirement if I was him. I really would. I would just hell yeah. I would. I would just get on like the podcast circuit where like I talk about being a winner and like this is what it takes to. What, what's your 10x sh- shit you guys do on the yak? Where, you, where yeah. you make, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Uh, Grant Cardone. Yeah, where he's just like he's like life help, and here's here's how to be a winner like me. That should be Christian Brown. That's what he should do. He should just like start seminars where he's like, yeah. I'm, I'm literally addicted to winning, and here's how you do it. Follow my <laughs> Win follow my formula, with Christian Brown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, shout out Peyton Watson, by the way. Uh, just yeah, I want to quickly shout out Peyton Watson. Uh, bench player for for the for the nuggets who famously as everyone remembers I, I don't need to point this out to everybody but just in case there's one or two people out there that that uh, weren't aware of this uh announced his commitment to ucla on the titus and tate podcast our our, our one and only five-star commitment we ever uh we ever got on the program um announced he would be going to ucla live on our show uh and then just won an nba championship so coincidence i don't know maybe probably not probably not but but maybe shout out to him he's, he's he was always my guy for that we, we've been we were fishing for five stars and by the way i'm still fishing for five stars like i will gladly do that uh i i think like i i i'm a hip I, i'm a hypocrite in a lot of ways tonight tj because i'm also a hypocrite in that like when i watch recruitment announcements 
when they're someone else doing them, when like Sports Center cuts in, they're like, all right, we go to Joplin, Missouri, where we got a four star running back. All right, David, who's it going to be? Is it Missouri or is it Arkansas? The floor is yours. And then he's in the high school gym and he's got the two hats and he's like reading the statement. I want to thank God. I want to thank my family. And he just talks for like 10 minutes and you're like, just pick a goddamn hat. Um, Every time I watch that, I, I say, who the hell is this for? Who would who wants to see this? Unless you're a fan of one of these two teams, this is insane content. But at the same time, TJ, if I'm being completely honest, I want that for myself. And I will any, – any five-star recruit that wants to commit on my show, I will – gladly roll out the red carpet and let you take yeah. you could talk for you could talk for 30 minutes you can give a full monologue just because it's an investment tj because for when you go on to win an nba championship i can claim that as my own i'm hanging a banner in my office today the peyton watson won the nba title <laughs> dylan harper come on down commit on the show <laughs> dylan harper but only, yes but only if it's good news if it's bad news please stay can away. you imagine dylan harper coming on this show and committing somewhere other than Rutgers? Yeah. oh my god <laughs> he has to do <laughs> so good I just sent you a video Joke is just feeling it he throws Jamal Murray to the pool <laughs> oh my god <laughs> alright so it, it all right, that's fun alright 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 all right, all right, all right, we're good maybe he's just maybe he's just like camera shy and he knows there's cameras in front of him and he's like I just kind of want to celebrate in private with my people I, yeah. That's what I, that's the head cannon I'm going with now is that he's 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 very happy and he's emotional. He just like is weird in front of a camera and he's like, get this camera out of my face, um, which I understand. I get it. Uh, any anyone else that I'm trying to think of that I wanted to shout out? Yeah. Uh, so Jokic was the lowest drafted uh, finals M- M- finals MVP ever. Dude, that's such a cool part of his lore being drafted during the taco bell commercial i love that so yes, much yes dude so they got to bring the quesarito back for him he's such a perfect player for that to be the case you know yeah it, it could not it could not work out any better than for that to be him um yeah i uh i think that's it congrats to the nuggets a very i can't remember a time when i was satisfied this much by the college champion and the NBA champion. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's a dumb thing. It, it, it might not make sense to a lot of people, but I feel like uh, it, it makes sense to me, damn it, that that when, when we crown champions in the sport of basketball, it, there, there, some feel right and some don't. And sometimes you're like, this, 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 there's something off about this and I don't like this. And this was, this team's not fun. These are, these guys are scumbags or like this, you know, uh, and and there are plenty of people that hate UConn. I understand that, but I I, I fell in love with this UConn team very very early in the season. And uh, I, I in the end when they won the title, I talked myself out of them at certain points, and I had doubts about Tristan. But like when they won the title, I was like, damn it, it was right in front of our face the whole time. They're so freaking fun and they're so likable. And you know, I I understand if you're a Big East fan, you're like, how could you say that? But I'm sorry. This is how I feel. Uh, same thing with the Nuggets. I did. There, there's. They, to me, they were the most fun team in the NBA all season. Um, and for them to win the title and kind of validate that their style of basketball, which is like just f- fun, fun style of basketball. Here's a, here's a thought. Let's play fun team basketball. Uh, to validate that is is very rewarding for a neutral observer like myself. Um, and, and I felt the same way. That's I, I felt that way about UConn too. I thought they were the most fun team in the country uh, in totality of the season. I thought UConn or uh, the Nuggets were the most fun. And I can't remember. Yeah, a year where like both teams winning where I was like, this this is so perfect. I have no notes. I have zero notes for the basketball gods. You got it right. Congratulations. Um, well done. Now I guess the question is, who wins in a best of seven, the Nuggets or UConn? Uh, if you go... Hmm, that's a that's a so I don't know that's that's a tough hypothetical because I think it depends on a lot of factors like it, who's got home court advantage is it NBA yeah. three point line um, <laughs> how many points would Jokic have scored if he went to San Diego State <laughs> he would he would have averaged twelve points a game. Uh, yeah. He would have averaged he would average one and a half assists because he would have thrown insane passes and all of his teammates would have bricked every shot. Oh yeah, or just like not been able to receive the pass. It would have flown yeah. up in like the tenth row. <laughs> they have to make the shots for it to for him to be credited with an assist. So he would have only averaged one and a half assists. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're breaking down the UConn 
Denver matchup um, at point guard. You got Tristan Newton, Jamal Murray. I like I like Denver in that matchup. I think Jamal Murray is just better. I think he is. I do. I'm sorry. You know, sorry UConn fans. Sorry. I think Jamal Murray's a little better. Uh, I def I I think I definitely give the edge to the Nuggets at center as well. I think Jokic, Adama Sanogo. It's close for me. It is close. Um, you know, I think Jokic saying he was scared to play college basketball because it's it's too fast and too athletic. I think that, you know, it, it, it raises some questions as to whether Sonogo could just run circles around him. But I, I do think Jokic kind of proved to me in these finals that he he could be a force in the Big East, TJ. Um, but then from there, I don't know. It's it's up near. I mean, Andre Jackson is is... I don't know. It's it's it. We'll, we'll save that for a different show. We'll save that for. I'm leaning Nuggets and seven, but it, it honestly could go either way for me. It honestly could go either way. And I, I you think you got to consider the altitude in a seven game <laughs> series. <the> too. <laughs> you have to consider it, again if if like UConn's playing at home, the scumbag UConn fans do they sway it yeah. in favor of UConn? Does Dan Hurley shenanigans? Do you factor that in at, at all? Are these Big East rep? Is this are we playing old Big East basketball? Because we saw a little bit of that from Miami tonight. Miami, the Miami Heat were playing old Big East basketball. Now, if UConn, who is, is born and bred in the old Big East basketball, if Miami can do that to Denver, maybe you, UConn turns it up a notch. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm leaning Nuggets in seven, but I need some more time to think about this. Um, <laughs> speaking of college when you basketball, were in school, did go you ahead. Have, did you have were there were the Big Ten refs as notoriously bad as they seem to be today? Yeah, they were. It's it's a. Uh, you you had names for that, and you saw the names. Oh the yeah, like oh, it's yeah. gonna be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We had we had we, the uh, I I I freaking love the. I would talk to the refs during timeouts and stuff, and they uh, um, they were they were always like funny, but like they, 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 they there were definitely some that were more likable than others, and uh, they they were all considered bad, but the ones that were likable were always so funny because like. Coach Mata would um, just always do personal pleas with them, like the the, the scumbags, like the, Ted Valentine's, like the one guy that everyone's like, "Fuck this guy," and they just like they they don't try to be personable with him because they know it's going to go nowhere, and he's just you know, yeah. he's just his his own ego is just driving everything out there, and you're just like along for the ride, kind of. Um, but like Terry Weimer is an example of a guy that like like I I, I just picture like Thad Mata like trying to do a personal plea with Terry. He's like, come on, Terry. My boys are, are my boys are out there giving it their all now. Come on now, Terry. Like, you know, you know, don't do this to me, Terry. Don't do, you know, um, do doing stuff like that would always crack me up. And then I would talk to the refs during timeouts and, but they were, they were, they were considered horrendous. They yeah. were, they were, they were all considered. <laughs> when, when Bo Borowski retired, I think there was a parade in Piscataway, New Jersey. Jim Burr was the guy I remember. He he was he just looks like the uh, uh, what's the what's the uh, um, Pixar movie where like your feelings. What if your feelings were real Inside life? Out. Inside Out. The anger one. The the one that like the, the that yeah. that Jim Jim Burr looks like that that fucking anger one. Like just anybody. And if you don't know who Jim Burr is, just Google Jim Burr. Um, hit enter and then nod along and be like, yeah, Titus called it. He nailed that. Yep, yep, sure does. Looks exactly like that guy. Uh, he, he was one that, that we hated, but uh, I don't know. There, there were uh, Terry Weimer. Let me look up what Terry Weimer's up to. Terry Weimer basketball. Fan. I always liked Terry Weimer. I don't know. He was, he was oh, he retired. That's right. He did retire. All, I, I feel like a lot of the guys that were, that were – Boy, that makes me feel old. A lot of the guys that were calling games when I was in school are now retiring, which, like, I don't even feel like I'm that old, but you feel like refs would stick around forever. But I don't know. Ted Valentine retired. Remember when Ted Valentine retired and then unretired? And, and then the Big Ten was like, fuck you, you're you're retired. You're never coming back to the Big Ten. <laughs> that happened. He turned his back on Joel Berry. He was calling a North Carolina game. He turned his back on Joel Berry, and everyone was like, this asshole, this, this dude, well, who does this dude think he is? And then he got so affected by people being mad at him for being a douchebag that he was like, you know what? I'm just going to retire. Fine. I'm just going to retire. And everyone was like, okay, this is what we've been asking for for years. And then like, no one was sad that he left and he was, he just kept it. So he's like, I'm going to come back and make sure that everyone is sad when I leave. And then the big 10 was like, no, stay gone. You're never calling big 10 games again. So, uh, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Uh, college basketball thoughts real quick. Uh, there were two rule changes I wanted to touch on, TJ. Uh, one, they have tweaked the the charge rule. We are closer. We it is a. Uh, I didn't expect an overnight change. Um, I didn't like like I, I didn't expect a, an extreme go from the current rule to go to to my utopian world where the the help side charge is completely banned and it's a flagrant foul if you do it. Um, but we're getting closer, and they've gone from uh, you have to be established before the or like once the the offensive player leaves his feet, you must be established as a, as a help side defender. To now, you have to be established before the offensive player plants his foot to then leave his feet. So it's a little, it's a little, di- and I I do I actually am okay with this. Like I th- I, I want to see how this works. Now we know with officials that they. Uh, this is this is another tale as old as time. Is that we, we get initiatives from college basketball going into a season? Uh, they they talk about it a lot. We see some calls to start the season, and then by late December, you, we never see any of that shit again, and we just go back to the old system, and and all that gets thrown out the window. So uh, I I am aware that they will probably revert back to the old ways, um, but there is a world, TJ, where I think I am satisfied with this, where I don't I, I will I will lay down my arms in the charge crusade. The banning charge crusade. If this, in fact, is called like I think it should, like it, like it's written. If it's called like it's written, I think I might. It might be a fair compromise to me because I think you're ba- what you're basically doing is you're taking every 50-50 call and you're giving it to the offense, which is how it should be. If it's if it's anywhere close to on the fence in my mind, a charge like everyone says a charge block is is the toughest call to make for refs. I actually think it should be like it, it is the way the rule is written, but I actually think it should not be that hard. It should just be like. If it's very obviously a charge, then it's a charge. If it's not obvious and there's any gray area whatsoever, it's a block, and that should be how it's how it's approached by by refs. Um, we should not be pausing video and zooming in on feet and you know rewinding and doing frame by frame. That should not. It's just like played in real time. If it looked like it was 50-50, give it to the offense, and that'll make the game a lot safer and whatever. I don't need to do the band charges ran again, but I think. Um, I think this will go a long way towards fixing the 50-50 calls, which ultimately might make me satisfied. So I'm very happy about that. The other thing I'm very happy about, a rule change that's coming to college basketball, is that no longer do you, are, are you limited to just uh, one through five as the digits you can use on jerseys. You can now use digits six through nine, um, specifically digits six and nine. Specifically, you can be jersey number 69. Uh, this is something that is now allowed in college basketball. And I'm very excited about this. This is going to be, we, we have to do, I think on this show, whether whether it's a Mark Titus show deal or whether it's Barstool Sports as a whole, I think we have to pounce on this and take advantage of NIL stuff with guys who wear jersey number 69. I think we have to put our big brains together and we have to figure something out, TJ, because I want to drop bags for, for the brave souls out there that are wearing 69 on their jersey. Um, and especially because like college coaches obviously are like, typically like crusty old dudes that like don't want to have any fun. Um, so I just love the idea of player, like just players wearing 69 and their coaches just kind of have to deal with it. And you know, like the coaches are kind of like mad about it and they're like, yeah. God damn it. I wish these, I wish these kids would take this more seriously. But. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody should take advantage of it and become the first player to wear number 69. Like, like the first guy. Yeah. Tomorrow. Somebody should step up and announce like, number change. My numbers changed. I number change. Put out the, the graphic first player ever. Yeah. In college basketball history, I'm the first player to ever wear 69. So, uh, yeah, the, the reason the reason it used to be one through five is because when you're reporting a foul, like if it's a foul on number 15, if there's a number six on the on the floor and there's a 15 and you hold up six fingers, the scores table doesn't know who which guy you're talking about. So they were always like, you you have to do one through five because we only have five fingers on each hand. And then the NBA started doing whatever number you wanted, and college people were scratching their heads like, how the how the fuck did they get away with it? And then after. I think like 30 or 40 years of an intense study, they figured out that the refs just turn their hands over. That if it's like number 66, they just go six, six, and then they just flip it. And then like just by going like that, or here's here's another thing the refs could do. They just like fucking walk over the table and they say 66. Yeah. <laughs> the foul's on 66. That's six. <laughs> they don't even use hand signals. Um, so the powers of being college, college but, basketball has yeah. discovered. College basketball is like, oh my god, that's genius. We never thought about that. Um, so that's cool. So uh, I'm fired up about those rule changes. 
Those will be great. The, the, we, we are officially in basketball off season. Um, the draft is coming up next week. Uh, maybe do maybe do a little bit of draft stuff. Obviously, not maybe. We will. We'll talk about the draft. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Here, here's a little nugget for you. Denver Nuggets nugget. There we go. Draft segues galore going on right here. Um, I meant to I meant to talk about this when I was talking about Aaron Gordon earlier. But Aaron Gordon and Aaron Wiggins these past two seasons, both in the 2014 draft. Wiggins goes number one overall. Gordon goes number four overall. Um, two great stories of dudes that had just sky high expectations entering the league. Uh, were were put on a pedestal and and were put like in a position at a very young age to be something that they like maybe ultimately weren't either they weren't ready for in that moment or like maybe ultimately it's just not like wired within them or like maybe they're just ultimately like not that good of a player or whatever. But uh, like Aaron, Aaron Wiggins was never going to lead the Minnesota Timberwolves to multiple NBA championships. Like we thought he was maybe going to when he was the number one recruit in the country going to Kansas. Uh, Aaron Gordon was never going to be just a perennial like Eastern conference final taking the, the magic on these deep playoff runs. And I'm carrying the franchise on my back. Forget Dwight Howard. You have Aaron Gordon now. I'm the guy. Like the, the, these guys weren't those guys. But when you get drafted that high, that becomes the expectation. Uh, and and it, it it I don't know. It just sometimes it, it's not like they got crushed by that expectation. But there's it's not always like a perfect fit. Wiggins ends up in Golden State, makes an All Star team, wins an NBA championship. Golden State does not win a title last year without him. They 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 can they would not. They simply would not have won the title last year if Andrew Wiggins was not on the team. The exact same thing is true of Aaron Gordon this year. If, Andrew, if Aaron Gordon, God forbid, had had torn his knee up heading into these playoffs, Denver doesn't win the title. I, I believe that in my heart. As good as Jokic is, as good as Murray is, um, they don't they don't win an NBA championship without Aaron Gordon. And I think there's something beautiful about both of those guys' stories, and for them to happen back to back, back to back years, and for them to be in the same draft as well is funny enough. But um, I, I I just I throw that out there before we shift into like draft talk. Because that's what happens. Like whoever goes, that guy where guys get drafted, you kind of put these expectations on people and all that sort of thing, and then you de- declare guys busts after half a season of NBA basketball. And other guys are superstars, even though they just had a great rookie year, and maybe they're not going to do any. I don't know. It's as it turns out, fit matters, and and um, I think a lot of people don't ever, especially with basketball, people don't seem to ever like factor that in. It just kind of is like if if you can hoop. You can hoop, and we just expect you to be that dude out of the gate. And if you're not that dude, you must be a bust. So get the fuck out of my face. And that's kind of not how it works, as it turns out. And sometimes you get guys in the right positions, they can flourish, and they can uh, be integral parts of a championship team. So uh, anyway, we'll we'll do draft stuff next week. Um, shout outs before we go. I want to shout out. Uh, I had a list here. Um, oh, myself. Shout out myself. Great takes on the uh, part of my take live podcast i thought like the other three dudes i don't want to say this to them on the show but they're kind of they're kind of bozos they don't get it i'm a guy (laughs) who gets it i famously get it that's what people say about me um and i i thought i was just fucking throwing flame after flame take on that show and i'm I'm kidding i can't uh no, those are always I'm go like go sixty percent through it. Yeah, it's those are those are really. I'm like I feel like they're meant for this one especially. It was meant for like an older audience, slightly like older than me maybe. Uh, a lot of it was about like early job stuff. Talked about so all, all three of the ones we've done. I feel like we have talked a lot about like being in your twenties, and um, yeah. there have been people that have reached out to me uh, both today and in the past. Like, can we get more like? Uh, not in your twenties, like I don't know, more older stuff. Like, what's it like to be in your thirties? Yeah. And what's Rasilla? What's it like to be in your forties? And you know, because <laughs> he's older than us. Um, and uh, uh, the reason we do that is because that's what everybody reaches. It like that's what uh, the, first of all, that's like PMT's audience. But then also yeah. like anytime you put out feelers, anytime you like, I think I think the the part of my take a Twitter account like tweeted like, what do you guys want us to talk about? Like that's what we get overflowed with with messages is like I'm 24 and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with my life. Yeah. Help me. Um, so that's what we address. And yeah, I don't know. Like maybe in that, when, when if we ever do another one, maybe we'll do older stuff. But like that's I do get people that are like, why do you guys talk about the same shit over and over? Like why the 20 like the the the, the journey between graduating college and turning 30? And it's like because that's the stuff that trips people up over yeah. and over and over that's the stuff you keep hearing from people over that's the, all the all the messages i got today all the stuff like people were like dude the awesome show whatever like 
a vast majority of the people were in their 20s. They were like, dude, I needed to hear that. I'm, I'm at a job I fucking hate, and I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I want to move to the city and chase the girl or if I want to chase the girl. So that's the reason we always talk about that stuff. But I wanted to, uh, I want to clean up duty if I can, TJ, quickly. Uh, two yeah, things I, I wanted have, to clean I have, up. I have two points after you do your two cleanups. Okay, I, I just, I want to, I want to do two cleanups because I knew I was going to get killed for both of these things. Um, and at this point, like we're printing the retraction on page twelve, you know, and I know no one's going to care. <laughs> we're this deep into a podcast, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with an audience that is dwarfed by part of my takes, but still. Um, the adoption thing. So I, I <laughs> as I was saying this, I knew I was going to get killed for it. That I was talking about um, when I was, this, this was not fresh out of college. First of all, I don't know if I made that clear on the show. This was right before I moved to LA. So I was like 28, 29. So I was a little older. This was not like 23 year old me trying to look into adopting a kid. This was 28, 29 year old me, which I guess in some ways makes it worse. Cause you think like I'm a little older. I should be more aware of like, this is never going to happen. But um the, I knew it was insane. That's the whole reason I was telling it on the show. So like people that are reaching out to me, like you're an insane human being. Why would you do that? I'm like, yeah, no shit. That's why I'm calling out my own behavior. Like I'm saying like, this was an insane, am I the first human being to ever, uh, be in a position where you're like, I feel unfulfilled in my life. So I should do something drastic. I don't think I am TJ. This was just my version of like getting a face tattoo or getting a stripper pregnant or something, you know, like this was just like, <laughs> it was a cry for help. And I, I thought, uh, I, and by the way, like I, I probably oversold how close I was to like trying to, it was literally one conversation with my neighbor where I was just like, Oh, you adopted some kids. Like I should do that. And he just laughed in my face and was like, no, you shouldn't. And then that was the end of that. It wasn't like I, <laughs> I was like petitioning the, the local government to allow me to, you know, like I wasn't on a crusade. It was just like, should I do this? No, I shouldn't. Okay. Moving on. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to clean that up because I, 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 as I, as I was talking about that, I knew people were going to kill me for it. And that's why I said it. Cause it was funny and I wanted it to be funny. Uh, and then the other thing was Dan was talking about, um, the question was, what is, what is an underrated vacation thing? Or like, an, uh, what, what do you do on vacation? What's like an underrated vacation thing? And people are losing their minds cause Rosillo and I were laughing at Dan's answer, which is basically the way he initially presented this was the way I heard it was like, he's, he's just sitting on his couch. He Googles a city books a flight for tomorrow, jumps on a plane, flies to that city, and then walks around the city center and, and just, like, walks around and just, like, looks at shit and then, like, gets on a plane and flies back. That's how I heard it when he first said it because he's like, my underrated thing is, like, just pick a city and go walk around. Um, so I was laughing at that because I was like, you just, so you just, like, look at a map and you're like, Albuquerque. And I jump, you jump on a plane to Albuquerque and then just fucking walk around and that's that's it. And then as he started explaining it more, it actually like rubber band effect back to like, it was so insane to me when he said it. And then when he explained it more, it became so insane that like, he was just literally describing a vacation where he was like, I, yeah. So my wife and I, no, no, no. I don't mean like I just randomly pick it. It's like, we, we plan a city we want to go to. And then we go to that city. We spend a few days there. We, we take in like, you know, we go to, we go to some nice dinners. We go to maybe a show. We, we go see some sites and, and then we come back and I'm like, Okay, now now this is absurd because that's just a vacation. <laughs> um, so I sounded a little like uh, I, I I think I sounded a little crazy. Is like I don't I I had people killing me for this. They're like, what was so crazy about Big Cat's vacation tip? I don't get it. Like I do that all the time. And I was like, well, that was what was crazy. But he he first pitched it as like just go to to yeah fr- freaking Salt Lake City and just walk around downtown and then fly back. Um, which I was like, that don't do that. That's insane. And then, and then as he clarified, it was like, well, this isn't, this isn't, this is just a vacation. You're just, you're just describing a vacation. So I, I wanted to clean those two things up. Okay. Your, your thoughts, TJ. Uh, my first thing was I didn't know, well, I've never interacted with Ryan Rosillo. Hopefully we have him on this show at some point. I didn't realize that he got his start at the same minor league baseball team that I got my start in the industry. No shit. The Trenton really? Thunder. Yeah. He, he was a Trenton Thunder uh, broadcaster and I, that was like my first live video job we gotta have we, we need to have him on the show and i'll just we'll, we'll do we'll do trenton the trenton two the the, the what would the segment be the, the the trenton two minutes or something and i just step yeah. back and i let you two just like go through your rolodex of trenton thunder people uh, yeah i think he was there for less than a season so i'm sure he's got just great memories from double a baseball but yeah getting paid and, twelve thousand dollars a year to <laughs> 
And then my other uh, question, follow up question was, have you texted Mike Conley yet? <sighs> That's tough. I thought that was interesting. That's tough, TJ. Um, so truth be told, that is why this is something I need to work on. So we'll, we'll talk about this on another show because we, we can wrap this up now. But we, I, I'm going to put a pin in this because we need to talk about this. I, I'm going to reinvent myself in Chicago, and I need to figure out what that is. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is because, like, when I moved to LA, I just became, I just like leaned all the way into being a Hollywood douchebag. Um, and that was how I reinvented myself. And I, I think I did a great job, if I'm being completely <laughs> honest. Uh, <laughs> so I want to when I move when I move back to the Midwest, I want to like re you know you got to reinvent. It's what you got to do. Everyone's doing it. You got to reinvent yourself when you go to a new city. Um, but it's a little harder because I'm moving back to like a culture that I'm very familiar with. So like I I don't want to all I don't like I don't want reinventing myself to just be I'm 24 again. You know, so I'm trying to think of ways to reinvent myself and. Maybe, maybe like not being a shy little bitch about like reaching out to friends could be something. Um, but we'll talk about that because I, I we, we need more guests on this show, and like it ultimately falls on my shoulders of like I, this part of the reason I I do so many solo pods is because like I I think to 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 book people on the show, and then I'm like, no, I don't want to bother them. They're gonna say they're not they don't want to come on my stupid show. Yeah, you know? and then. Here we are. It's a di- completely different world, but I feel the same way. Like I feel like I don't reach out to people that I went to college and shit with just because I don't feel like I don't know. I don't like. Have it's a, a real reason, thing, but- man. It's a real thing. I don't know. I struggle. I, I do struggle with it. I I, I do. I, I love I love my friends to death. I love like let Mike is an example I use just because I so many so many times I watch him play and I want to text him after the game and just be like you're awesome or not you're all, just like hey man thinking about it. just literally thinking about you yeah um. How's the fan, you know? And I, 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 I don't know what it is, man. I just have like that social anxiety. I just like, I, I can't, I'm a bitch. I can't do it. <laughs> and then when I see Mike, I'm like, dude, this is, you know, I'll, I'll text, I'll text, I'll text Mike. I'll text Mike. Nice. I'll text Mike. By end of week, I'm going to text Mike. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, uh, the switch. Yes. You have it. I see, I see it right there. You got the switch. You're playing it. Our thoughts. I, I I unboxed it yesterday and played for probably about four hours or so before going to bed. I'm I'm I understand. Are you in? You're yeah. It's a little overwhelming at first though, right? It's like yes. you're trying to figure out how the hell this. What's so going I've got, on? I've got the first four abilities or whatever. I just went through the t- temple of time and opened that door, and then they were like, "You got to go get one more thing." Actually. And that's where I, I I like left off after the first first session, so I I feel like I'm like point one percent involved into the game, but I understand why it's so popular because like, I've probably I've probably logged like two hundred hours and I feel like I'm point one percent into yeah. the game. I like it's there insane. was a lot of stuff where I like had to run right past it, and you have the option to do that. Where I was like, I can't. I've I've tried to fight this five times, and I keep like getting smoked. Oh, by stuff. oh, dude, that was that's what I was talking about. I was like, I'm the worst Zelda player on planet Earth, dude, because I'm just try, I'm literally just trying to like pick apples off trees, and I'm just I don't even know there's a dude behind me, and you just whop. And I'm there dead. was like there was one guy in like the snowy area that was just like a pile of blocks, like a super tall pile of blocks and like i would go at him and he would just like one shot me and like, do, like an animation that said like his name so like i understand that he's like a boss of some sort i just don't have the facilities to take yeah, we're this not guy ready. on yet and also yeah. i'm freezing to death i have to eat more spicy peppers and we're gonna <laughs> not die I, I, i'm in like it's going to take a while for me to get through it just because i'm busy with other stuff but i went today and i bought I bought a con- uh, the pro controller. A pro pro controller. I tried to get you one of those, but I I couldn't. <laughs> I did. I, I really did. I was gonna try to get you one, and then I was like, he can probably figure it out. He probably I, I has do his genuinely appreciate the gift, though. That was I didn't uh, for I, th- you had me for a second. I thought like maybe this was like a prank or something, or just like a meme, but I appreciate it. And Brandon is very upset. Brandon's about salty, it. but he he'll get over it. It's, <laughs> you, 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 it's I. It's one. It one. It's like a housewarming or a moving gift, whatever you want to call it, for Chicago. Two. It's team bonding. You know, we we got to get the chemistry up. We we need we need to be playing the same. We need to be having these conversations off air. By the way, let's take this off air and and talk about high rule. Um, and three. I I. If you're my producer, I, I I do well by you. You know, shout out to all the other. I, I'm I'm very close with all my other producers, including 
Uh, shout out Louise. We're, I think she's at TNT right now. She's going to be running fucking TNT in no time. She's at, she's over there at Turner killing it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what that's that's it was a no brainer for me, TJ. You said you're into video games. I was like, I'm playing the greatest video game I've ever played in my life. I got to make this reality. We gotta we gotta get you set up. So, uh, the 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 one thing I'll say with this game though is like I I have a recurring nightmare even before Zelda. Like I a recurring nightmare where like I set out to do uh, a task and then I continue to get distracted by stuff. So like w- one of the one of the uh, nightmares that I have is like I'm getting ready for a basketball game and I'm leaving my house to drive over to the gym and we have we're playing tonight and you know I'm like back at Ohio State or I'm in high school or something and uh on the way to the gym I realize I forgot my shoes at my buddy's house so I have to like swing by his house but then I go over to his house and like there's something going on now I have to deal with this but then as I'm dealing with this like something else comes up and I'm dealing and then like long story short like this this goes on in my head as I'm sleeping for like eight hours and then the games i miss the game and like and then i wake up and i'm like what the fuck just happened that is playing that that is what zelda is to me it's like i'm going i'm like all right i'm gonna go beat that monster over there what is that over there that that's the what why is that glowing let me go get that and then i'm going to get that and then there's a guy that's like hey buddy can you help me with this and i'm like yeah let me help you and then i completely forget about the initial thing that i was trying to do yeah and it's just like the add of it all is just like it's all over the place dude because because as it turns out nobody in hyrule can do anything for themselves It'll, right. it'll drive you crazy. It's like, why why can you people not do anything? You can't... You're all helpless. I'm saving all of uh, you. <laughs> my favorite character so far is like the little leaf guy that's like, can you... Can you take me over there? I can't move. Oh, dude, you're gonna like, you're gonna fucking I hate guess. those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already here. I guess I'll help. Yeah, those guys. And then the guy holding up the sign that he's like, can you help me hold up the sign? I'm like, you son of a bitch, dude. It's a sign. <laughs> I can't... I don't know. Anyway, uh... All right, I think that might be it. Uh... Oh, UFO stuff. I'm out. I'm out on I'm out on UFOs, dude. I, I tried to watch that interview with that dude and like I I don't know. I I the, the only thing I'll say with the UFO, um I here's the frustrating part. I think I didn't expect him to like have pictures of him like shaking hands with aliens or whatever. Uh and I don't think he's necessarily lying per se. I just I'm not ready to blow my load over the discourse right now. TJ put that on a quote card i'm not ready to blow my load over the discourse <laughs> just i'm not ready to blow my load uh, uh, yeah. Mark Titus. um but uh I, I one thing that's confusing to me is with ufo talk the conspiracy used to be that the government is hiding the ufos from us now the government like this guy is like gersich or whatever his name grush the the the, the dude the, the dude that's that's the well-connected guy that's talking all this stuff um now this dude's coming out saying all this stuff uh but now the conspiracy tj is that the government is it, this is a psyop and the government is like purposely saying that they're alien because they're trying and i just can't keep track of all that like i need i need the conspiracy theorists of the world to like lock in on like one thing so i know like you tell me what the the, the mainline narrative is you tell me what the conspiracy is i'll fall somewhere in the middle you know and we'll like do it that way but i'm used to a world where the people that were into the UFO stuff would be like, yeah, the conspiracy is the government's hiding it from us. Now the conspiracy seems to be the government is not hiding it from us. They're telling us false lies that there are aliens and all of it's just too confusing for me. And to me, I I, I guess I'm ultimately landing on like, maybe I do just need to see the aliens. I don't know. I need to see the head, hold up the hold up an alien head or shut the fuck up. Kind of that's that. I think that's where I'm at. I think they got me. They got me. They got me. They sucked me in. And I was like, I'm, I'm interested in what you're talking about. Maybe there's something there, but um, I don't know. I'm not ready to blow my load yet. So there you go. Uh, anything else? Do you have any two, other shout outs? Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Dave Portnoy and Kyrie Irving are going to 1v1 on a basketball court, allegedly. Who wins? <sighs> Kyrie's got to be careful with this one because um, this, this, this feels like Jimmy Kimmel versus Ted Cruz all over again. People forget Jimmy Kimmel... Uh, Challenge Ted Cruz to a one-on-one game of basketball, thinking he's just going to smoke Ted Cruz and humiliate him, and then Ted Cruz beat him. And so I would, I would just caution Kyrie, like, be sure that you can, you can beat Dave. Be sure that you can beat Dave. And I'm not, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know that Kyrie, he's got some injury problems. It depends on, to me, it depends on who the who's refing. Like going back to like the UConn versus Nuggets thing, like, what will the ref call carries? Um, how tight of a whistle are we getting in the in the in the paint? You know, uh, it's a toss up. 
I wonder where the odds makers are going to have it. <laughs> I was talking about it with some people at work the other day, and my suggestion was Dave has to make sure that it's losers, first of all. That way he has more opportunities. And then you and him just need to get in a gym and practice shooting it from the top of you know, the three-pointer yeah. so he can just get, like, get a check back to him and pop one immediately. Because yeah. if Dave scores one time against Kyrie Irving, it's a win. It's a win. he will be able to run that clip back over and over and over and over again for the rest of time. So this is this is going to sound. It's, I, I don't think I don't think Dave's going to be able to score on Kyrie Irving, unfortunately. Um, but <laughs> it is you could there there is a well you know what I, I'm not going to kill the dream. There is a world where. Uh, I'm just I'm just thinking back on my playing experience when we would do one on one drills. Like w- one of the things we would do is literally line up the whole team. Like you're about to play a game of knockout. The guy that's first in line turns around. You now have to guard this guy one on one. And then if if you get a stop, like you st- I forget what the rules were, but it's like you just you just line them up and you just play one on one. And I would be in the back of the line, like shit in my pants. Like you know, is Evan Turner going to guard me? Is David Light, who's like the best defender in the Big Ten, is he going to lock me up? And like I'm gonna just. I'm going to have to come up with like some insane move to score on David Lighty. And so, TJ, I, I did exactly what you said. I practiced one move. It was a step back on left. One dribble, step back on left. That was all I did. If you if you regard me one-on-one at Ohio State practice, you knew the move was coming. But it was also a little unguardable because I would just like – I would sort of push off. I'd like put my shoulder into you, yep. do set, step back to create separation, and then I would fade away and throw it up. And I would probably hit like 40% of them. And to your point, like the ones I would hit – when I would splash it on Evan Turner, I would not stop talking shit the rest of the practice. Because all it takes is one. That's all it takes. Yeah. So <laughs> never if, never if, mind that when I guard him, he just backs me down and dunks on me. Like, it doesn't matter. Because I splash him on the one. If Pat Bev gets him in the gym on defense, and then you get him in the gym on just That's that right. shot, <laughs> I think it's anybody's game. Just step back on left, dude. That's all you got to do. It's all, you just need that one shot. Uh, that, that's funny. Uh, anything else? Is that it? That I got, you had something else? College Baseball World Series starts this week. One of the most underrated events in the sports calendar, in my opinion. It sneaks up on me every year, dude. I'm, I, I got we got to watch it. Let's. Uh, is there someone at Barstool that uh, Mincy would have been the guy, right? I think. Yeah, I think that we do have some people going, but um, obviously not the the Brandon Walkers of the world. Like when he turned that into his own thing. But I, I went with him in 2021. That was like me and Brandon's first real thing we did together. Yeah. And it was like the greatest. It was stressful because it was a lot of work, but the best like two weeks of sports maybe I've ever been to. I love the awesome. idea of it. I, I, I love the idea of it. I, when I watch it, I love it. It just It's one of those deals that just kind of sneaks up on you. Like the Daytona 500 is yeah. that way too, where it's just like, ah, shit, that's this weekend? That's now? Damn, dude, I was like yeah. busy watching this other thing. And they kind of... Um, yeah, I'll have to watch that. I'll have to get into that. I, uh, There's a massive, massive underdog that made Omaha. Omaha's the final eight. Oral Roberts was a four seed in no, their no, no. regional. Too soon. Too soon. We don't – Buckeyes uh, – Buckeye like myself would never <laughs> – Oral Roberts is – that's a trigger. Yeah. It's a trigger term. It's a trigger term, TJ. <laughs> they're, they're in it, though. That's cool. They're the, the, the third four seed in the history of college baseball to make Omaha. Did uh, Wake Forest make it? Yeah, they're the number one seed overall. Yeah, because they're fucking awesome, right? Like, I knew they were good. I, I saw people talking about Wake Forest both the last couple of weeks, but, like, even during when the season started, people were all in the Wake They Forest. crushed they're the awesome. fuck out of yeah. everybody in the yeah. playoffs. Okay. That's what Ohio I, State's field is named after one of my favorite Yankees ever. Yeah, uh, uh, Nick Swisher, right? Yeah. He's our guy, man. He's awesome. Good dude, man. He, he does uh, baseball stuff for Fox now. Yeah, we I, we got to interview him a couple times on the our Yankees podcast, Short Porch. He's, he, he's out of his mind in the best way. Like he's, he's the just man. like like so much energy, so excited, and like he's he's so freaking fun. I, I wore thirty three all through my oh really playing, playing career after high school or like high school on. There we go, dude. No more common ground for us to Nick Swisher. Um, shout out Winning Time, Winning Time season two trailer dropped. Watch the whole thing, TJ. I'm gonna say it. Eyeball emoji. Didn't see Kurt Rambis in the trailer. It's got people. It's got people asking questions. It's got people asking questions. Huge. Is the dream still alive? Because people forget. I never did get the call from HBO that said you did not get the part. Uh, they just ghosted me. And maybe there's a world where they've been trying to get a hold of me. I wrote my number down wrong when I sent in my my reel. Um, yeah, maybe they got my contact info wrong. 
May, you know, and they've been trying to get a hold of me. They couldn't get a hold of me. They're like, shit, we got to shoot season two. Let's push Rambus to season three. I don't know. People are asking. Eyeball emojis. <laughs> the dream might still be alive. Or, so, it, when, but when, when winning time comes out, I think it's going to be in August. It's coming up in August. I want to have the guy who's playing Rambus on the show. And we're going to do, should we do a side-by-side audition? I'll have him yeah. do his audition. And I <laughs> we'll just, I'll just put you know, a script in front of each of you and... We let America decide who should have gotten the part. Um, yeah, I, I saw that trailer, and it, it. I wish I was more mature than this, but like, I'm a little butthurt about it. I did watch the trailer, and I was like, I don't know if I'm. I, I love season one. That's why I auditioned for season two. I was like, this this show's fucking awesome. I love I love season one so much. Um, but then I watched the season two trailer, and I was like, it, this this stinks. This is this hits too close to home. This this is a little too personal for me. So. I don't know. We're gonna have to. We're gonna, we're gonna have to see what happens when that show comes out, whether I get into it or not. I'll be the bigger man. I'll probably watch it. I'll probably still watch it, but the dream might still be alive, TJ. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I got. I uh, I had some Wikipedia rabbit holes I was gonna run down, but uh, we can save that for later. This is this is already way too long of a show. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna need topics now that there's no sports on that. Yeah. You know, no national sports on for a while. Yeah, we might do. Uh, or we'll do some NBA draft stuff, college roundup. I need to. I need to do better. I need to. I'm gonna reinvent myself. I'm gonna reach out to people. I want to have Andy Katz on the show. We need to do like Andy Katz uh, college basketball offseason roundup. Um, yeah, I need to be better at this, but uh, we'll figure it out. Um, congrats to the Nuggets. Fun team. Fun. Fun. Fun playoffs. Uh, finals were shit though. Congrats to the haters that said it would be shit. Um, I. I. I reached my limit tonight, and I'm glad it. Glad, I'm glad. I'm glad we don't have a game six. I'm glad it all happened. I'm glad they got to celebrate on their home court because that's weird too when you're raising a trophy on the visiting team's court. Although I'm sure they probably would have liked to have won the title in Miami. I imagine that's one of the better cities to win an NBA championship in and go out to the clubs. Uh, but be that as it may, winning in front of the home fans is nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the Nuggets are great. Now the dynasty starts, and uh, we see where it goes. So that'll that'll be fun. Um, that's the show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll be back on Thursday uh, with draft stuff, I guess, slash off-season stuff. The off-season's here. Basketball off-season. Officially here. Let's have some fun.